Hello, welcome to our online tutorial for the Bosch International General Certificate. It's another moment and today we're going to look at the last three uh, study questions in element one. That is to summarize our element so that our next video, our, our next, next tutorial, we are going to look at uh, the second element so that we move on well so far so good we are moving on well so if you are still having a problem in understanding the learning outcomes in this course please don't hesitate to ask i aim to dedicate to teach nebosh international general certificate the whole course or the complete course therefore be with me because i am going systematically or step by step each and every section and each and every element I talk about it or I teach it into detail so that those people who are pursuing the course can ha they can have a vibrant information and knowledge on how to handle or tackle their examination. So today we're going to look at the last three uh, questions or study questions that are in element one and that will mark the end of our element next video we're going to start officially to our second element in the cause so the first question the first question is uh which categories of people does an employer owe a duty to which categories of people does the employer or a duty to. So the employer, we said that, has got a duty to play, and one of the duties is to ensure the health and safety of some number of people or some number of categories, some uh, for a categories of people, or a category of number, a category number of people, and that is the following. So we're going to look at the following categories so that to, to see who the employer or a duty to in the organization. So an employer owes a duty to their own employees. That is the first uh, category. The employer has got the duty to ensure the employees are safe and free from any risk of uh, injuries and harm. The second category, other people, both workers and non-workers, who may be in their workplace. So those people who are other people, both workers and non-workers, who may be in their workplaces. So the people who are within his or their workplaces, they have the rights to deserve protection by the employer. And this can include visitors or contractors. So other workers who may be carrying out on the, uh, who may be carrying out to work on their behalf outside of their workplaces and other people who may be outside their workplaces but affected by the work that is conducted within the organization. So. There are some number of people here have been mentioned. The first category is the employer is responsible uh, for the health and safety of his own employees or his own workers. The second category is the people who are not his own workers, but they are work they are they, they are working within the organization on behalf of the business or on, be, on his behalf. So as an employer, should ensure that these people are protected from any kind of risk of harm. So uh, it is the duty uh, for these em employers to ensure their safety is well taken care of. Third, other people who might be, uh, who might not be, direct employers, uh, employer, employees who might not be direct employees or workers of, the, uh, of that, uh, uh, who might not be direct employees or 
they are not direct workers in that organization but they are they are working uh, they are found within the organization such as visitors so these people also deserve protection as well as other people who are outside the business or outside the company or the organization but they are affected by the work activity that is taking place within the organization this might be the public people of the public those people who are passing by uh, around uh, the uh, company or around the organization also deserve protection so let's say work is being conducted at a high rise or work at height and people are working beneath that work at height so it is the duty to ensure that that the employer ensure that all the health and safety measures are put in place including barricading or barricading barricading the area that the work is taking place so that people will not access it so that there will be no any kind of injuries and hazard that will uh, be incurred so that is the uh, those are the categories those are the categories of people that the employer owes a duty to number two uh, the second question list the uh, criteria list the criteria that might be used to access to assess the suitability of a contractor to undertake work on behalf of a client i repeat list the criteria that may, might be used to assess the suitability of a contractor to undertake work on behalf of a client so there is a criteria that must be used to identify the right contractor that will be granted a contract to perform work in the organization so there is a way on how to identify the right contractor and we said that the criteria to assess the suitability of a contractor may include the following number one their health and safety policy they should pre present the health and safety policy as an organization that they follow the health and safety policy uh, for them to be granted uh, the contract number two example of risk assessment and method statements they should also provide example of risk assessment that they have already made for that specific work or even previous client work and method statement is the way how the work will be conducted in the organization all the measures which will be put in place all the equipments that will be involved and how many workers will be involved and how competent are the workers the method statement is including all this so the contractor should provide this information or this document for them to be granted the contract the third the qualification and training records of the staffs should also be provided to the client for them to be given the contract again membership of professional organizations they should also provide them their membership let's say they have membership with uh, iosh so they have iosh membership or other bodies that are recognized they should also provide a test and maintenance records for plant and equipment they should also provide the client a test and maintenance records on how they are conducting their maintenance for the equipments and machines next reference from other parts or current clients they should give an example of a re reference document or reference of work they already conducted in the previous uh, uh, with with the previous they already engaged with the previous client or current client this will serve as an example or will serve them uh, as uh, evident that they are well competent and they are they fit to do the work next accident history such as uh, report, reportable accidents 
rate. So they should also provide information of all the reportable accidents, such as uh, uh, high risk or such as the severe accidents which occurs during their workplaces. This could be involve fire or any work that involve a photo. So that involve the loss of some body parts or even photo. These are the major accidents that needs to be uh, needs to be reported to the uh, state authority, and this should be also recorded so that they can act. They can serve as an example of how they conduct their work activities. Next, enforcement policy or enforcement action history. They should provide their enforcement action history. Is there a point that they were pro uh, prosecuted in the court because they failed to conduct or to perform the required health and safety standards? They should also provide this information. If they have been severally prosecuted by a given organization or even the authority that they do not follow the health and safety measures, therefore they don't fit to be given a contract. Approve of adequate resources. They should also provide ad of adequate resources of the work that they, what they do. Lastly, insurance. Do they have any insurance with the equipments that they use? Or did they insure their own business at large? So that in case of anything, the client or the organization will know that this company is insured that if they are going to do anything wrong within my premise, then I, 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 I can claim for compensation. And because they are insured, I am sure that, and I am guaranteed to be compensated for the loss that I might have incurred. The next and the last question, the last question, what are the responsibilities of the clients? and the contractor, where a contractor is working in a client's workplace. What are the responsibilities of both the contractors and the clients where the contractor is conducting work within the client premise? The client has engaged a contractor and the contractor is already doing his work activity within the client premise. Therefore, what are the responsibilities for both stakeholders to ensure health and safety is maintained? So that is our question, and this is how we can uh, answer it uh, the better way. So in general, in general, in general, when a contractor is working in a client workplace, the client will be responsible for the workplace and environment. So the client is responsible for the workplace and the environment within the, uh, the, the, the organization. And the contractor for the job that they are carrying out, so the client is responsible for the primis and the environment, health and safety issues. Also, the contractor is responsible for that particular kind of work that is conducted to ensure that it is conducted in a safe manner and free from any types of risk and hazard to, uh, to other people. Also, both parties will be responsible for the health and safety of their own workers. That is another point. So I believe that you can write them down, this one. I will repeat so that you can write them well. In general, in general, in general terms, when a contractor is working in a client workplace, comma, the client will be responsible for the workplace and the environment. And the contractor for the job when uh, in general terms, 
when a contractor is uh, when a contractor is in a client workplace the client will be responsible for the workplace and environment and the contractor for the job that they are carrying out both parties will be responsible for the health and safety of their own workers but they will also be responsible for the health and safety of other people who might be affected by their own work. So the contractor will be responsible for the safety of the client's employees or workers if they were carrying out work at, that might injure the client's employees. And the client might be responsible or might be partly responsible for the safety of members of the public if they might be injured by the work that the contractors were carrying out. In this way, the duties of responsibilities are shared by both the client and the contractor. So that is how you can simply answer this question. So I will elaborate so that you can understand and you can frame the way you want. You can frame it the way you want. So the first point is, when the contractor is conducting work within the client premise, the client is responsible for the health and safety of the premise as well as the surrounding environment. And the contractor is responsible for the risk or for the health and safety of the work activity that he is conducting within, the, within that premise. Also, the client is responsible for the health and safety or both parties are responsible for the health and safety of their own employees. Another thing, the employer is responsible or the contractor is responsible for the health and safety of his own employees as well as the employees of the client. And lastly, the employer or the client is responsible for the health and safety of the public people outside who are or who might be affected by the work activity conducted by the contractor. So that means the client is the overall or has got an overall responsibility to ensure the health and safety of any activity which is conducted in his premise. And failure to comply to any health and safety standards, the client will be responsible for the, uh, and we might be prosecuted, even though the risk was created by the contractor. So this marked the end of our study questions. So for those people who are still having questions, Related to this learning out outcome, I believe that we have exhausted we have ex exhausted it all, and that is how it's supposed to be covered. So, our next tutorial, hopefully, we are going to start our second element in IGC. Therefore, stay tuned because. This information is coming to you free of charge at your home comfort. You just need to sit back with your internet and enjoy health and safety knowledge. Remember our slogan that life is rare and you need to live with care. Thank you for watching. Let's meet our next, let's meet in our next tutorial.